Hello everyone, I am Narc Survivor. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Please hit the thumbs up button down below to show your support. Hit subscribe and click all notifications to be notified when I upload a new video. And if you would like to book a one-on-one -on -one coaching session with me, just go to my website, it is narcsurvivor.co.uk. Narcissists are corrupt. They are dishonorable, immoral and unprincipled. They falsify and manipulate. They act dishonestly, even while they may be in a position of authority. They abuse power for money or personal gain. They dishonestly use their possession to gain an advantage. They lack morals. They're disloyal. They're perverted. They're rotten, spoiled, and they lack integrity. And many of them engage in illegal activities. They believe that they won't get caught or because they won't have to face the consequences for their actions. Because circumstances exist which do not prevent or discourage them from doing so. Or because they do not fear prosecution. They engage in corruption because they believe that they cannot succeed by doing things morally and honestly. So essentially they have given up on themselves and on doing things the right way because they believe they're not good enough. Corruption is the manifestation of failure of core values such as honesty, trust, values and empathy. And it reveals that narcissists have insatiable materialistic desires which encourage unethical shortcuts to achieve their luxurious life through th sacrificing core societal values, which promotes a lack of social engagement, de-emphasized moral education, socio-economic inequality, personal greed over societal values, uninclusive platforms, and disempowered community leaders, which contributes to a disintegrated society which struggles to raise its voice against unethical practices such as corruption because voice is not given to the voiceless. Research shows that narcissism effectively induces corruption and that boredom strengthens the link between their traits and behaviours. So they engage in corruption and unethical behaviours out of a lack of enthusiasm, lack of interest and a lack of concern. Because they're unhappy and uninterested in people, the world and their lives. They can't find satisfaction or fulfillment in anything. They have nothing better to do. So they're left in a state of complete boredom where they become restless. And they're unable to relax as a result of anxiety because they're bored, impatient and dissatisfied. They're unhappy about a situation and wanting change. And this has been consistently indicated in several studies where narcissism positively predicted corruption when boredom was high, whereas the effect disappeared when boredom was low. So when boredom is reduced, it inhibits the corruption of narcissists. And evidence suggests that corruption deteriorates subjective well-being as it comes with a psychological cost of shame and guilt, which is inevitable and unavoidable. Narcissists lack self-worth and self-esteem so they rely on other people. They project a false self to elicit a constant stream of attention and narcissistic supply. But this false self doesn't even exist. It's not real. It's a facade which they show to the world. And it's whatever they intend to be seen as. Whether it's to be seen as someone powerful, elegant, smart, wealthy or well connected. They then collect the reactions to this projected false self from their environment. And if they expected attention, adulation, 
admiration, fear, respect, applause or affirmation is not ready or available when they want or need it, then it will be demanded or extorted by the narcissist. Money, compliments and sexual conquests are also forms of narcissistic supply. And without this supply source they would not survive because their fragile ego depends on it to maintain their unstable self-esteem. Their primary source of supply is based on public recognition or fame, or in private, more interpersonal settings, it may include admiration, praise, applause, fear and repulsion. Their primary source of supply represents any kind of attention, whether it is positive or negative, while their secondary source of supply involves this image that they reject of how they're living a good life and they're maintaining a safe existence, where they're financially secure and they're acquiring companionship and they're being a part of a community or society. These are all representations of their secondary source of supply. It's the overall image that narcissists bring to their other partners, friends or relatives. But this supply always has to be positive because otherwise it would harm their false image. So while narcissists may engage in corruption, not everyone sees that side of them because they're leading two different lives that are kept separate from each other because one of them involves secret and often illegal activities which may be regarded as embarrassing, immoral or unlawful and thus kept hidden from their family, friends or work colleagues. So essentially they're living a lie, a false existence because they're not telling the whole truth about their life. And in some situations they may even have two separate homes families and sets of activities, one of which they keep secret. And by being unable to be truthful to other people, they are being untruthful to themselves, which has dramatic consequences for their mental health, as it manifests in depression, anxiety, panic attacks, eating disorders and self-harm. It also leads to insecurities and self-esteem challenges and it will leave them with feelings of shame and guilt because they're pathological liars and they're constantly having to cover up their tracks whether they're hiding or destroying evidence of their identity and their actions because they want to keep them secret so they have to lie all the time to the point where they may often even forget the lies they've told and they begin to lose touch with regality where they don't know what's true and what's not. While they're constantly burdened with the pressure that if they do open up, they won't be accepted. So many of them are left without any choice but to lie to people their whole lives. They have to suppress their feelings. But while they may be seeking connection or a sense of belonging, it's something they're never going to have. Because they're denying who they are and they're hiding parts of themselves. So they will never be able to connect to anyone and no one will ever be able to connect to them because they can't even connect to themselves. And they don't want anyone to know who they really are because they fear that no one would accept them. It's not all glitz and glamour for those who choose to engage in corruption and unethical activities. It may appear exciting and attractive, but it actually has no real worth because it carries significant psychological damage. Managing dual lives results in immense psychological stress. From a constant juggling act, maintaining lies and the fear of exposure, which can trigger anxiety, shame and guilt. And they will also struggle with identity issues where they are unable to reconcile their dual lives and they experience a sense of fraudulence which leads to lower self-worth and self-esteem and if their double life was ever to be revealed the consequences would be devastating to where the damage to their relationships, reputation and trust would be irreversible 
which would cause significant psychological stress. Their secrets may once have been so innocent, until they became more and more complex, and the difficult consequences became more difficult to face. They once had a traditional and singular life, which then became a double life, which people may regard as uncredible when exposed. But narcissists have great difficulty confessing their secrets because of the anxiety, shame and guilt that they are associated with. The worsening and intensifying of those simple secrets, which eventually became complicated and desperate situations, incarcerates them to a prison of their own making. Until keeping secrets becomes a lifestyle that demands more and more of their time and energy. It's stressful, frustrating and exhausting, and it often results in devastating outcomes, which may make us wonder why they put themselves through such torture, when they could just confess and move on. But they have made a choice to go down this path of destruction, and while many people may long and yearn for the day when they are finally exposed, and all of their secrets come to light. Based on what I've said so far, it appears as though the worst thing you could do to a narcissist is to never expose them, and instead to let them continue on their self-destructing path. But recent studies show that 70% of all males and 50% of all females will have an extramarital affair at some point during their marriage, which suggests that most people will eventually live a double life. And according to Dr. Sherry Turkle, who is a sociologist at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, some people use online interactive games like The Sims Online to create families and communities that they wish they had. Dr. Sherry Turkle believes that this is a deeper psychological meaning to this, and that people are using online identities to express problems and attempt to solve them in a relatively consequence-free environment. But back to narcissists and corruption. Research has demonstrated a relationship between grandiose narcissism and corruption. People with grandiose narcissistic traits are more likely to engage in corruption to receive the attention and rewards that they feel they deserve. Because they want to demonstrate their superiority. They want to demonstrate that they are better or stronger when it's really nothing more than a delusion. A fantasy that they've created inside their heads. Because if a person is superior and they are better or stronger then they do not need to engage in corruption because it would be self-evident, which means that it would not need to be demonstrated or explained because it would be obvious. It would be easily perceived and understood. But narcissists are constantly having to engage in corruption to demonstrate their superiority because the reality is that they are actually an inferior species they're lower in status and ability. And that is why they must use and exploit people in order to climb the social ladder. They engage in corruption out of boredom and because their lives lack meaning, they're experiencing a lack of interest, enthusiasm and concern. And they're worried by dullness and tedious repetition because their lives are uninteresting and unexciting. Their lives has no real value or importance because it lacks a sense of purpose, direction and fulfillment and it is characterized by a feeling of emptiness. So their boredom derives from attention and meaning deficits because their current activities do not match their valued goals of demonstrating their inflated self-worth which is why they experience an attention deficit where they find it difficult to concentrate on their current task because they're dis dis 
that's inclined to experience boredom. And instead they would rather feel like they're someone or something. So their boredom motivates them to seek meaning and self-worth, which ironically leads them to engage in destructive behavior such as corruption, to delusionally maintain their false beliefs of high self-worth. When their behavior is clearly demonstrating the contrary, but the way that they experience it in their minds is that by committing corrupt acts, they are then strengthening and supporting their self-worth and restoring meaning. Because when narcissists experience boredom, they perceive a threat to their false sense of self. Because their desire for confirmation of their self-worth is not fulfilled in the current circumstances, so they are unable to engage in satisfying activity which then motivates them to seek any possible opportunity to confirm, strengthen and support their self-worth. And by engaging in corruption, it may provide them with material resources and admirable social status, which may then enhance their self-worth. So corruption really just serves as a tool to boost their ego and fulfill their need for a sense of meaning to make them feel more important than they actually are, which means that they are more likely to behave corruptly under conditions of boredom. And when they do not experience boredom, they are unlikely to behave corruptly. They will only behave corruptly if they're experiencing a lack of interest, enthusiasm and concern, and their lives are uninteresting and unexciting where it lacks a sense of purpose, direction and fulfillment and they're experiencing a feeling of emptiness. That is when they will engage in corruption in an attempt to fill that void. But no matter what they achieve or obtain through their efforts, it will never be enough and they will always want more because it's self-deceit. They're not only fooling other people, but they end up fooling themselves. And from behaving corruptly, it carries a lot of anxiety, shame and guilt to where it has now diminished their self-esteem and it has isolated them not only from other people, but from God. Because they never confessed their sins or made amends. So they rejected God's forgiveness, which means that they will never heal because they have followed a path that leads them to death and loneliness but well, they have now experienced a spiritual death because they have quite literally sold their souls to the devil. While they were given many opportunities to acknowledge and confess their sin so that they could receive forgiveness and healing and be cleansed from all unrighteousness. But they chose to reject God's gift of forgiveness, restoration and cleansing. And instead they settled for an image of righteousness which is soaked in the shame that they now have to live in because they've sold their souls. Which is why they're always so miserable and they can't find fulfillment in anything. So now they're envious of your soul and they want to destroy it. And it's why whenever you're near, all they're going to do is try to corrupt you because they want to steal your light and energy. They feed off it because they can't generate it from within. They want to corrupt you because you're not sick, dishonest and depraved like they are. And instead you're pure and contaminated and unspoiled, which is why they want to sensitize you. They want to make you susceptible to negative physical and emotional stimuli so that you are familiar with problems and bad situations. They want to destroy your childlike innocence because they sold their souls. So now, now they lack a true sense of self, which means that they must gain a sense of self through you by putting you down and making you feel small so that they can feel better and more powerful than you, which then gives them a false sense of elevating. They will pretend to be a good person but then they will undermine you in small ways by trapping you in conversations, 
so that they can work subtle digs at you because they want to bring you down to their level. They love to watch you go from being happy to then feeling distraught and confused because then it makes them feel like you're just like them. It tells them that they're not alone in their pit of misery and despair when that is just an illusion because you are nothing like them. You're greater than them and they know it. And that is why they have to pull you down. It's why they will undermine you and then play on your need for validation. Because it's the only way that they can feel alive. By exerting a secret or corrupt influence on you. And feeding off the life that is in you. That is non-existent in them. Thank you for watching. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up. Share your thoughts in the comment section. Hit the subscribe button to receive the notifications. If you would like to support the channel, you can donate at paypal.me slash narcsurvivor. You can book a one-on-one -on -one with me on my website. It's narcsurvivor.co.uk. Thank you for watching and I'll talk to you soon.